Good evening and welcome to News Central TV Beyond the Continent. My name is Mazino Appeal. Now here are stories making headlines beyond the continent. Now we begin the news with U.S. politics where U.S. President Joe Biden has said he will ensure peaceful and orderly transition to Donald Trump after the Republicans sweeping election win. Biden said this in an address to the nation from the White House. The U.S. president also urged Americans to lower the political temperature after Donald Trump's sweeping election win. Today, I spoke with President-elect Trump to congratulate him on his victory. And I assured him that I would direct my entire administration to work with his team to ensure a peaceful and orderly transition. That's what the American people deserve. Now joining us on the news to discuss this, a global affairs analyst, Mr. A.G.K. Okwa. Mr. A.G.K., you're welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. Well, thank you for having me. Thank you. I'm going to go straight to it. So given the current political environment in the United States, what are the main obstacles President uh, Biden must overcome to ensure a peaceful and orderly transition to Donald Trump following his election victory? I don't, I don't see any obstacle. I think the president has done what the president supposed to do. Um, you know, the election was fair, you know, fair and square. You know, we know who the winner is. I mean, the, the campaign is over the truck. So now, you know, um, it's for, you know, the president to meet with the uh, president-elect and they have their discussion. I mean, remember, when this is all over, when the election hearing is over, then it's now, you know, they, the governance of the government has to move on. So they will meet, you know, uh, there will be, you know, picture opportunities for them to laugh and do all of that stuff. I think, you know, the sad thing is the people who are disappointed because their candidate didn't win, but, but that's what the elections are all over. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's all about. So, you know, America is going to live on and, and, um, we look forward to what happens in January when the new president takes over and then uh, look for the next four years. So I want to go back four years uh, when it was Trump who was supposed to hand over to the Biden administration. We remember a time when he actually ordered or asked supporters to beseech the, uh, uh, the White House. Now we're going back to a Trump administration. Now, having that in mind, what's the significance of President Biden's appeal for Americans to actually lower the political temperature? And how will it contribute to the country's future political unity? Well, I mean, it's going to contribute. I mean, we, we everybody wants peace. I mean, uh, you know, when the president takes over, it's not the president of his political party. It's the president of American people. You know, the, we have to go through the electioneering and we have to go through some of the hot what we use, but once we, we pick whomever is elected, then, you know, American people will, you know, rally. Of course, there's still going to be sentimental reactions and feelings about, oh, if I wish my own person or if their own person was there. But that's, you know, neither here or there. So, you know, Biden is doing what Biden's supposed to do. Trump did what he had to do. And there are, you know, uh, interpretations to that. And, you know, it led to whatever he had to deal with in the past four years, you know, you know, getting indicted, getting charged and all of those things. But, you know, again, we, we have to move on. And then move on is, you know, peace have to, you know, the time doesn't wait for anybody. The clock rolls every 24 hours, whether you're in pain or in happiness. So that's what American people have to recognize. And we recognize that. And we got to, you know, look forward. So Trump has learned this lesson and everybody's learned this lesson. Are we going to have a repeat? No. But it's gone down in the history book. And, you know, the conspiracy terrorists are still going to be there you know, doing their permutations and offering whatever they think their own interpretation is. But at the end of the day, it's the United States of America, and the president is not the president of his political party, but the president of America. Very, very true. Um, now, we are going into a second Trump administration, um, and the entire world was very interested in this election. It wasn't just the Americas. It was all over the world, even here in Nigeria. That's because of the international relationships that's concerned when another president steps into power. Now, for the U.S., this, how is it going to affect international and domestic policies and, of course, all the relationships that they have? Well, yeah, America happens to be, uh, you know, uh, on top of the heap. I mean, you know, of nearly 200 countries in the world, 
America has managed both by design and default to create this sort of personal reputation and brand that they have. And, and if you know, it doesn't ask any country to do it the way they do it, it doesn't ask any country to have a relationship with them. So if what in America, what if what we do in America it makes other people nervous and makes other people want to have a relationship, it's up to them. America, you know, wants to be a leader of the world. There are other challenges. There's China, there's Russia, there's everybody. But to, what you gotta know at the end of the day, no country is like America. It's a country of immigrants. So everybody from every part of the world has an American connection. So that is why the interest is strong. That is why the attention is strong. And America is going to take advantage of it. Uh, you know, we have Mexico next door. They recently elected a female president. We don't care. We don't even know who that is. You know, Canada to the north, we don't care what they do. But uh, remember, these three countries make up North America, but America has built, we are the only ones that go Americans. Those, those ones go Canadians and Mexico. And then, you know, for Nigeria, I hope, you know, there's an opportunity for a relationship that is going to work. There are more Nigerians in America than any part of the world. There are more Nigerians educated, you know, by American institutions than anywhere. And we have a bridge. Can there be an effective relationship to where whomever is in Asorok exploits that opportunity, begin to have a you know, productive engagement dialogue. Not necessarily with Americans, but with the native Nigerians or Nigerians who have access to that, who can say, hey, Mr. President, you know, we can work with you on this aspect. It's very disheartening that of all the educated Nigerians that have come to America and are still coming to America, Nigeria does business with Lebanese, mm -hmm. does business with China, does business with India. These are countries that are trying to copy from America. Why do you copy from C countries instead of coming to the A country? If you're in school and you copy from a C student, are you going to get a C? You're going to see a minus. So I am hoping that Tinibu is paying attention and begin to do what mm -hmm. Tinibu went to school here. So he, he understands an aspect of America. Okay. How can he penetrate? or use Nigerians in America to make his administration work. But look at what is going on. This in Nigeria are very tough because, again, he's dancing and going all over the world instead of paying attention to where he can say, where can I get a, a solution? America is where he can get a solution and not Lebanese or Chinese or Indians uh, over there running Nigeria while Nigerians are suffering. Lessons even for Nigeria and other African countries. Very, very true. How is Mr. Okba? Uh, most Trump supporters will actually say that the reason why they voted for Trump is because of the downturn in the economy. Now, how can the president-elect Trump and also Joe Biden uh, collaborate to alleviate the extreme political division that is based off of the bad economy that they've had in America for the past four years since the Biden administration? Well, you know, America said when, when, if you want to really get America's attention, hit them in the pocket. Okay, and so you know, in the in the past four years, compared to the four years before, you know, our grocery expenses have jumped, our gasoline have jumped. You know, nobody drives, you know, in the world more than Americans. In most Americans drive an average of fifteen to twenty thousand miles a year. So when you now go to the gas pump, you know, what we used to fill your tank for thirty dollars, now you're doing it for sixty-five or seventy. People pay attention, and and so we're hoping that. You know, Trump being a businessman, you know, and, you know, it's going to be able to do what fix and address that. We have more oil reserve in the world than any other country. America produces more oil than anybody else. So why are we buying oil from people? Why are we not drilling? That's why Trump keeps saying, drill, drill, baby, drill. We go in to drill that. We have more liquefied natural gas reserve than, I mean, natural gas reserve than anybody. We're going to build energy and we're going to export that. And Trump has mentioned the opportunity of bringing in Elon Musk, you know, some kind of capacity to address the waste in our government. Do you know for every budget of $1 billion, there's a redundancy factor and waste factor of 15%. So now multiply that into trillions to see how much waste we have. And the American taxpayer is always the one 
then to you know to pay for this stuff. So we want to address that efficiency in the inefficiency in our budget system. And then when you do that, you put more money in the pocket of Americans, and that's what's going to do what jumpstart our economy. The interest rate went up, but since Trump. Uh, since Trump uh, uh, got re-elected, the interest rate is going to head south. In fact, yesterday, I watched my stock holdings. It jumped up by 3%, just for the mere fact that he won, that he was won, because he's going to take on the issues that are affecting average Americans. It is about taxes. You know, if people tax you and you still don't get the benefit, it's painful. So we want to deregulate those things that affect us living in America. We want to deregulate, you know, address the issues of the waste in our government because government doesn't earn money. The government earns money through people. And if the government is a waste source for the money from the people, then that inefficiency has to be addressed. And I'm looking forward to seeing that being addressed because the more money we have, the more purchasing power we have, the more happiness we have. Remember in our constitution, it said in pursuit of happiness. Mm. Even in pursuit of happiness, you have pain. How are you going to pursue it? Just like what is going on in Nigeria. Let me give you an example. When oh, Mr. Nigeria educate, Mr. Educate, ago, my apologies, Mr. Educate. I won't be able to let you have that example. My apologies, but we're going to look forward to that in uh, subsequent, perhaps, maybe bulletins where we'll invite you over. Thank you very much, sir. Well, thank you for having me. You're welcome. Now, moving on, President-elect Donald Trump's election victory was a decisive one, winning five out of seven swing states with Arizona and Nevada still to be counted. In Washington, D.C., international correspondent Afia Hagen asked voters for their thoughts on the 2024 election results. Washington, D.C., Kamala Harris told supporters do not despair as she vowed to help Donald Trump with the transfer of power. I know many people feel like we're entering a dark time, but for the benefit of us all, I hope that's not the case, she said in her first speech since losing the election. In her concession speech, she went on to say she wants our supporters to treat everyone with kindness and respect as they continue to fight for fundamental rights and freedoms that must be respected and upheld. She said we will continue to wage this fight in the voting booth, in the courts and in the public square, and we will also also wage it in quieter ways and how we live our lives by treating one another with kindness and respect, by looking in the face of a stranger and seeing a neighbour, by always using our strength to lift people up, to fight for the dignity that all people deserve. Trump carved out a decisive victory as he won five of the seven battleground states. He's ahead in the final two yet to declare, Nevada and Arizona. People within and close to Trump's political operation credit his victory to a host of factors, not least of which was a campaign that from the start appeared far more sophisticated and disciplined than the previous two. For Vice President Kamala Harris, saddled with the baggage of an unpopular incumbent and some reviews about the US economy, the race proved challenging and her scramble to demonstrate her readiness for the role Trump once held ultimately fell short for enough Americans to tip the scales. President Joe Biden spoke with President-elect Donald Trump to congratulate him on his victory and invited him to the White House, according to a White House official. The president is also planning to address the nation on Thursday, the official said. For News Central, I'm Afia Hagen in Washington, D.C. And away from that, more than 420,000 children in the Amazon basin have been affected by dangerous levels of water scarcity and drought in three countries according to the United Nations. The UN Children's Fund, ahead of the COP29 climate change summit in Baku, Azerbaijan, said the record-breaking drought ongoing since last year is taking a toll on indigenous and other communities in Brazil, Colombia and Peru, reliant on boat connections, and called on leaders to deliver critical action, including a dramatic increase in climate financing for children. And now to Europe, where the 5th European Political Community Summit held on Thursday in Hungary brought together leaders from 47 European countries or nations to address key challenges facing the continent. Central topics including uh, strengthening Europe's security in light of the ongoing conflict in Ukraine, advancing the transition to renewable energy and tackling the climate uh, crisis, leaders reaffirmed their support for Ukraine 
pledging continued military and humanitarian aid while also stressing the importance of NATO and collective defense. The summit also focused on migration reform with calls for coordinated European approach. As tensions rise globally, the summit emphasized unity and cooperation with a commitment to sustainable growth, energy security and long-term peace in Europe. And NATO Secretary General Mark Rutte says he wants to work alongside U.S. President-elect Donald Trump in tackling the dangerous new developments concerning North Korea's entry into Russia's invasion of Ukraine. While speaking to reporters on Thursday ahead of the European Political Community Summit in Budapest, Root Aid, uh, uh, Root Aid they, uh, said that they are progressively observing that China, North Korea, Iran and Russia are collaborating against Ukraine. We're going to break now, and when we come back, we'll tell you that Schultz to seek vote of confidence after firing finance minister when we return. Welcome back. Now, still in the region, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov insists that whether relations with the U.S. would resume is not up to the Russians and alleges they didn't break off relations. He made this remark at a press conference as Lavrov visits Kazakhstan after Donald Trump won the U.S. elections and believes that the deep problems between the United States and Russia are caused in particular by the Americans' elite's attitude. Посмотрим, если будут предложения, повторю еще, не мы прерывали отношения и не нам предлагать их возобновить, но если последует инициатива о том, чтобы по-честному, без каких-либо односторонних требований сесть и поговорить, где мы находимся и как нам дальше двигаться, за нами дело не станет. Мы никогда не отказывались от контактов с кем бы то ни было. Президент Путин каждый раз, когда на эту тему заходит разговор, подчеркивает нашу позицию. Разговаривать всегда лучше, чем изолироваться друг от друга. И, как я понимаю, президент Трамп, при всем том, что проблемы в отношениях между Россией и США очень глубокие, они проистекают прежде всего из осознание, ощущение американской элиты, что необходимо подавлять любых конкурентов на мировой арене, чтобы не появлялся никто, кто каким-то образом поставит под вопрос. And now let's tell you also that German Chancellor Olaf Scholz amid a deep coalition crisis said he will seek a vote of confidence in January that could pave the way for early elections after sacking rebellious finance minister Christian Lindner because there was no longer any basis of trust, making it impossible to work together. The move comes after weeks of bitter feuding that have racked the coalition government between Schultz, Social Democrats, and Lindner's, uh, Lindner's uh, Free Democrats, and the Greens. Too oft wurden die nötigen Kompromisse übertönt durch öffentlich inszenierten Streit und laute ideologische Forderungen. Zu oft hat Bundesminister Lindner Gesetze sachfremd blockiert. Zu oft hat er kleinkariert parteipolitisch taktiert. Zu oft hat er mein Vertrauen gebrochen. Sogar die Einigung auf den Haushalt hat er einseitig wieder aufgekündigt, nachdem wir uns in langen Verhandlungen bereits darauf verständigt hatten. Es gibt keine Vertrauensbasis für die weitere Zusammenarbeit. So ist ernsthafte Regierungsarbeit nicht möglich. Meanwhile, Australia's government says it will introduce world-leading legislation to ban children under 16 from social media. Prime Minister Anthony Albanese said the proposed laws to be tabled in Parliament next week were aimed at mitigating the harm social media was inflicting on Australian children. 
While many of the details are yet to be debated, the government also says the ban would not apply to young people already on social media. There will be no exemptions on the age limit for children who have consent from their parents. The government says that the onus would be on social media platforms to show they are taking responsibility steps, uh, responsible steps to prevent access. And in the Middle East, an Israeli strike on a northern, uh, rather southern Leban Lebanese city of Sidon has killed three Lebanese citizens and wounded three Lebanese soldiers and four Malaysians uh, personnel from uh, UNIFIL forces on Thursday. In a statement by the army, the strike targeted a car while it was passing a checkpoint which led to the killing of three Lebanese who were inside it. According to the army statement, the UNIFIL members who were struck were in a UN peacekeeping force vehicle that was going through the checkpoint at the time while the injured soldier had been serving at the checkpoint. And now in sports, British boxer Conor Benn has been cleared by the National Anti-Doping Panel over two failed drug tests in 2022. Ben, who tested positive for clomiphene, a fertility drug that boosts testosterone, faced cancel fights and suspensions. His scheduled fight with Chris Eubank in January, or rather Eubank Jr. in October 2022, was called off and the British Boxing Board of Control revoked his license. Although Ben's suspension was lifted in January 2000, uh, July 2023, it was later reinstated following appeals from the board and UK Anti-Doping Agency. The NADP has now ruled that UKAD didn't prove Ben's guilt, prompting Ben to express relief in a social media post calling the ordeal the toughest fight of his life. The UKAD is reviewing the decision for a potential appeal the 2022 bout was intended to revive the Ben versus Eubank rivalry as their fathers famously fought in the 1990s. And that's all this hour. Do remember you can watch New Central Live on DSTV Channel 422, Star Times Channel 274, AVO TV and of course on YouTube. Now many thanks for watching. My name is Mazino Appeal.